Yeah, I, I think that the first thing that really comes to mind is just how incredibly tough it was to play in Lubbock uh, all the years that I was here a, as an assistant. And what what has uh, transpired really this year is that their their crowd is definitely returning. Um, and I expect Sunday to be a pretty live event. Um, you know, their their fans are really embracing their team, and it's um, it's breast cancer awareness um, day for them. And I think that that city and that community has really embraced that day. Um, they have a lot of activities surrounding that. They have a, a former player that was a national champion that is. Uh, battling cancer right now, so I, I think it's a it, it'll be a lively event on Sunday, and I expect it to be very competitive on both parts. What are the last? Um, what you've had eight what eight nine days off until you play again? Mm -hmm. uh, what's going on during that time? What have you guys been able to accomplish? Uh, I guess in addition to just resting up and getting healthy. Um, a little bit of rest, uh, most definitely, and and uh, gives the players a chance to catch up academically on, on things if they um, have put them aside during that long run in January. Um, gives us a chance to really kind of look back at the, at the first nine games and say, you know, what did we do well and how can we build on that and, and then what was exposed in those games, um, which, I mean, obviously the most recent one was the Baylor game and with a, a pretty bad taste in your mouth, you're wanting to play again pretty quickly and we didn't get to do that. so gave us a chance to marinate that and, and really understand, you know, where where we didn't do well. Uh, was there anything we did well and, and can we can we learn from that experience? Because I think any time you play a high caliber team like Baylor, you're going to get um, tested, exposed, whatever you want to call it, and then it's how you respond to that and do, do you improve on the things that you didn't do well. And that's kind of what we've tried to address is you know, where are the areas that we didn't play well in that game? Um, you know, you can look at the Oklahoma game right before that, and I thought we had some stretches that were really, really good, but I also thought that we allowed them back in the game with shot selection um, and just some lackadaisical defensive play. So we, we need to get that cleaned up as we go into the second half. How uh, have they, you know, responded emotionally since that, since that Baylor, that tough Baylor loss? How have the practices been? Uh, they've been a little up and down, and I don't know if that's just the length of time that we had. This is probably the longest break we've ever had in conference play between games. So just because we've normally had, uh, in, in the midst of this, we've had non-conference games. Um, so it's been a little bit, um, I would say, up and down. You know, I, I could give you this grand illusion that we've had great practices, but they've, they've been a bit up and down, so I'll be anxious to see how we play on Sunday. When you look at the first nine games, do you try to look at the whole entire picture, um, picking out the good or the bad, or do you is more focus on the Baylor loss and trying to figure out what went wrong in that game? Oh, no, I, I think you definitely look at the good and the bad. I mean, you, you know, you look at the TCU loss and, and um, I think any time you, you lose, it's, you know, heightened awareness of what you didn't do wrong, I mean, that, that you didn't do right. And, and so I think that you look at, you try to look at the good and the bad for sure. Um, I, I think our defense has been pretty solid, and, and, you know, especially compared to non-conference play. Our, our defense has improved really dramatically. and. Um, I just think that we have to get to a place where our shot selection gets better. And that's, that's being said regardless of whether you're winning the game or losing the game. Because it's more glaring in losses because I guess people pay attention to possessions a little bit more. But if you're a coach, like you're watching every possession anyway. And again, I go back to even the Oklahoma game that I thought we, hand, where we were ahead handily. And to me, our shot selection, it, some of the shots might as well have been turnovers. So even though, you know, we may have had a low turnover game, I mean, you know, did we, did we shoot the best shot we can get? And so I think that's been something that we really um, need to focus on and we need to get better so that when we have those really uh, close games where ob the obvious every possession matters, then we're prepared for that. 
whenever you have a week, like you said, that of, of kind of lackluster mm -hmm. uh, practices going on the road against a, you know, a, a bit of a resurgent mm -hmm. program, you know, that's happening out there in Lubbock. Yep. Uh, what is what what tone or what mood do you choose on, on game day or leading up to this trip with with the team? Considering those two factors that you just kind of talked about. Yeah, I mean, it, again, I'm coming off of a day where I didn't think we had a very good practice yesterday. I didn't think it was very energetic. Um, maybe hump Wednesday or whatever you call that, and we just the lull of the middle of the week and not having the game. Um, but today needs to be better, and, and you hit that on the head. Like, what do you, how do you approach this leading up to the game on Sunday? What does our energy level need to be on Sunday? And um, I, I guess I just, we need to get our juices flowing mm -hmm. again. Um, disappointing loss, then you have a week off, and so the, it's kind of a perfect storm of blah, mm -hmm. even the weather. So then you just, you, you know, you have to figure out that's over and done with. I mean, we have to turn the page and we have to get ready to play a very um, inspired team right now. I mean, it, and I say this all of the time about the teams in our league. Um, you know, there are teams that are very, very hungry. And Tech is one of those that has a rich tradition. Uh, their expect expectations are high uh, as far as, you know, what their fans expect and what their coaches expect. And, you know, they're, they're playing inspired basketball. And we have to be prepared for that on Sunday. Is it better after, like, you know, kind of going through the week you all have gone through, is it better to, you know, have that first game be on the road in an environment like, like Tech, or does it even matter? Well, I'd rather play at home, for sure. Right. <laughs> I, I just think everybody would rather play at home. But, um, you know, I, I do enjoy the process of playing on the road just from the standpoint of um, – fans. I mean, I think they're expecting, I think they had maybe six, 7,000 at this game last year as far as the, the breast cancer or the cancer awareness game. And I think they're expecting maybe 10 on Sunday is what um, I'm hearing. So, you know, that, that'll, that'll give our kids some juice, I think, play in front of a crowd like that. You were pretty disappointed in the ball movement, the mm -hmm. number of assists you had after yeah. the Baylor game, what, what can you do just to get the team to share the ball a little bit more? Um, I think some of it just goes back to all of them. They want to do well, and I think that it's a, there's a fine line, and I've said that many times, between being aggressive offensively and making sure that you're not just kind of standing around passing up shots. There's a fine line with that. And then taking shots that you know maybe one more pass and there's a better shot. And some of that is just flow. Um, some of that is, is mental as far as, you know, making sure that you're keeping the, the team in focus. Um, some of it's matchups, you know, so you go back to thinking the game. I mean, you know, do I have a matchup on the perimeter? Can I go down, you know, if I'm a post player, is my matchup better down low? Um, when do I need to pick and pop as opposed to, you know, rolling? I mean, there's just a lot to it that creates the extra passes. Um, but conference play lends to that. I mean, I, I, I've always said that, that once you get past this first round or you start to get deep into conference play, it does become more of a half-court game. I mean, it, it, even for us, the loss was disappointing, but I did think that there were some good things about our defense. I thought there, that we forced them into extra passes. I thought we, our transition defense was pretty good. Um, so, I mean, what do you think everybody's focusing on against us? I mean, they're going to try to stop us in transition, try to keep our bigs off the boards. And so you have to resort to what, what are the next options um, offensively? You know, how can you get your flow going a little bit better and understand that you're not just going to score in two seconds? Um, and I think we need to improve in that dramatically. What do you take from your first meeting with, with Texas Tech? I think you, from what I remember, you guys dominated them. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't feel like I could take very much from it, to be honest with you, based on how they're playing right now. I mean, they just beat Oklahoma State last weekend, Saturday, Sunday, whatever day it was, by a considerable amount and made 23s. They set a conference record made 23s um, they're just playing at a at a high level as far as offensive confidence um, 
so it was hard for me to take a lot from our game other than what, what were we successful in offensively, how do we guard them. Um, but I do think that they look a little different right now and, and more confident. Going back to the shot selection question, is that something where all the players just need to you know, take more accountability on that or you know, just, just should need to be more demanding on the floor um, since she is the you know, senior point guard? Is there yeah. one person who can step up in that? I think that it's a combination of some things. I, I think that is we love to score in transition, but again, the recognition of there's nothing there and now let's make the defense work a little bit. Let's make sure we reverse the basketball and shift them so that we can get them out of position and get what we're looking for. Um, I do think that player recognition is some of it and accountability in a sense of what is my best shot and how I, can I get to my best shot how, or how can I help my teammate get to their best shot. So the screening, cutting, um, playing with purpose is really, really important. Um, I, I think it is just a, a combination and, and conference play can, can kind of, um, if you're not careful, kind of get you in lulls because again, it turns into some half court and it turns into recognition every game wasn't like the last one and I think that for and we have to remember that once we get past our four seniors we're playing all sophomores and freshmen so I think that recognition of okay well that shot was there the last game it might not be there this might not be the game plan that the opponent we have today is playing so that is I think a little bit about what we're struggling with is just the recognition of what is open I believe Joanne was the first one you guys went to in the Baylor game off the bench. And mm -hmm. She knocked down a couple of nice threes. What has she kind of shown you um, over these last couple couple of weeks? Just staying the course more than anything else. I, I think um, players get frustrated. They get, you know, young players get um, frustrated maybe a little bit more than older ones do sometimes. And, and I think um, the value of just like working every day in practice and staying in the process of it and understanding that some days you're going to be rewarded and some days you're not. I think Jo has that mentality in her life. Um, academically, I mean, you don't, you're not an engineering major by accident. Um, you're probably not here as a basketball player by accident. So understanding the, the process of the day-to-day -day work is really, really important and being able to stick with it even when you don't get rewarded is enormously important. And I think she gets that.